Hey girl, I can lick it, I can ride it while you slip it and slide it. I can do all them little tricks and keep. Today, we're diving into the world of the queen herself, Nicki Minaj. Ever wondered what Nicki's secret talent is beyond her extraordinary rapping skills? Fall so hard, just took a knee. Give me Rocky ASAP, nigga, worth the race. Or perhaps how she managed to stand out in the male dominated rap game. Buckle up because we've got the answers you've been craving. Let's jump right into the top 10 Nicki Minaj facts you didn't know. Number 10 on our list delves into Nikki's real name and why she despises it. Artists often opt for stage names that resonate better. But for Nikki, her given name Onika Tanya Miraj didn't align with her liking. She revealed that her record label pushed her to change it, settling on Minaj as it resembled Miraj. Despite this, Nikki detests the change, stating during a Vogue interview that someone altered her name against her will. In her words, one of the first production deals I signed, the guy wanted my name to be Minaj, and I fought him tooth and nail, but he convinced me. I always hated it. Ranked at number 9 is the revelation about Nikki, who once embodied various personas. While we're familiar with her flamboyant rap persona, reflected in her stage name, distinct style and performances, Nikki as a child assumed different identities. Now it might sound like typical childhood imagination, where we all play different roles, but for her, it was a means of coping with a challenging home life. Instead of it being a mere game, she used these personas as an escape. In a 2010 interview with New York Magazine, Nikki disclosed assuming up to 15 different characters to detach herself from her parents' conflicts. To get away from all my parents' fighting, I would imagine being a new person, she shared. Cookie was my first identity and stayed with me for a while. Then I went on to Harajaku Barbie, then Nikki Minaj. Fantasy was my reality. Taking the number 8 position is the story of her dismissal from her initial job, an often overlooked aspect that reminds us celebrities had regular beginnings too. Nikki's debut employment was at a Red Lobster in the Bronx, New York, where she applied during her teenage years to earn some weekend pocket money. It's a phase we all go through, seeking that extra cash as teens. However, her stint there ended abruptly due to customer complaints about her service and attitude. Her customer interactions were reportedly subpar, leading to her termination. They probably didn't foresee who that teenager would become someday. Zooming into the number 7 slot is her discovery story and honestly, I was clueless about how Nikki was found. She emerged as an artist driven to break into the industry, starting with backup singing gigs for local NYC rappers. This experience fueled her songwriting journey, and much like many of us at that time, she shared her music and life on her MySpace profile. Eventually, Dirty Money CEO Fendi stumbled upon her page, captivated by her work, and promptly signed her. This connection led her to Lil Wayne, sparking a collaboration on several mixtapes, starting with Playtime Is Over in April 2007. They released multiple mixtapes before she officially joined Lil Wayne's Young Money label in August 2009, making her the label's first female artist. The rest, as they say, is history. In short, her rise to stardom kicked off from there. It's a reminder of the incredible impact of showcasing your talents on social media. You never know who's watching. Coming in at number 6, her aspirations to become an actress were quite serious. It's likely rooted in her history of embracing various personas to cope with family struggles. She took acting seriously, attending LaGuardia High School in Queens, New York with hopes of pursuing it further. Despite submitting for a singing program and being rejected, she admired Meryl Streep deeply, someone who always left her speechless. In 2001, she landed a role in her first off-Broadway show, In Case You Forget. Despite hoping it would launch her acting career, it didn't quite take off. 
Subsequently, she explored other jobs and began sharing her music online. Delving into the fifth spot on the list, her profound love for stuffed animals. Beyond what you might glean from her extravagant sets and costumes, her affection for these toys runs deep. At 36, she cherishes a few monkey plushies as if they were her own children. In interviews, she revealed her habit of carrying seven stuffed animals on long journeys, even conversing with them when alone. Once, she lost her beloved pink stuffed monkey, Oscar, at an airport and offered a $50,000 reward for its return. Number 4 brings us to her place of birth, a detail often misunderstood. While many assume she hails from New York due to her upbringing there, she was actually born on December 8, 1982 in St. James, Trinidad and Tobago. At the age of five, she moved with her family to New York. Interestingly, her background holds an Indian connection. Her father, Robert Miraj, is of Indo-Trinidadian descent, while her mother, Carol Miraj, has Afro-Trinidadian roots, making Nikki one-quarter Indian. Now, in the third position, a surprise fact. She was once under the management of Waka Flock's mom, Deborah Antney. However, this collaboration didn't last long. In 2010, Nikki fired her without explanation, generating headlines. Deborah spoke about it, mentioning she initially received a suspension letter, followed by a cease and desist letter from Nikki's attorney, prohibiting any further business. Despite this, Deborah expressed no ill will, stating her affection and wishing Nikki great success, likening her to one of her own children. At the second spot, a significant event in Nikki's life emerged when her cousin, Nicholas, was tragically shot and killed. While this event made headlines, many might not recall or were unaware of the story. In July 2011, Nikki shared on Twitter that Nicholas was murdered near his Brooklyn home, having suffered multiple gunshot wounds. Authorities suspected his murder was a case of mistaken identity, as he wasn't associated with gang members. This loss drove Nikki to passionately advocate for gun laws and people's rights, using the tragedy to foster positive change. And at number one, the backstory behind The Boy sheds light on Nikki's songwriting inspiration. Contrary to what some might assume, the song isn't about a boyfriend. It's rooted on the domestic violence she witnessed as a child. Her father's physical abuse toward her mother, even attempting to set their house on fire, led Nikki to live with her grandmother for protection. Her experiences drive her advocacy for women's empowerment and rights. Despite the hardships, she maintains a close bond with her mother. Nikki openly discusses her past, revealing a different side to her in her documentary, Queen, a stark contrast to her media persona. If you like this video, click the next one shown on the screen. I'm sure you'll like it. Thanks for watching.